Welcome to our Erev Shabbat Talks, here from Eretz Yisrael. I have a little bit of time left before the sun goes down. It is Shabbat Pesach, Cholom Oed, the festival week of the redemption of the Jewish people from Egypt. And Shabbat is, of course, God's rest from work, from creation, and we are made in His image to experience a tiny spark of His experience. Right now, the world is suffering from things they've never seen before, we've never heard of before. This shutdown, the unemployment, the, the various rules and regulations that everybody has to keep for our protection. We've got so much information out there, it's getting a bit maddening. You look at one article, it's telling you that you need to wear gloves and mask. And another article is telling you that the gloves and masks don't help. Another article tells you that chloroquine helps you. Another one says, no, it doesn't. And then this doctor claims that something else will help you. And another one says something else will help you. And all this mixing of information is bound to give us a sense of despair, a sense of giving up. And I believe that is the very test of this entire event. That we're being bombarded with information from the media. Now, the media, is that's a big word with a capital M, right? But because we are the media too. We, Facebook and YouTube has given us the opportunity to... Everybody's a broadcasting station. Everybody's broadcasting to the world one way or the other. If not to the physical world, then the spiritual world. We broadcast to God every time we open our mouths. So what do we do? If you listen to all these conflicting reports about what's happening, the death rate's going up, the death rate's going down, the disease is spreading, the disease is, is slowing down, who do you believe? And God says, believe in me. Don't believe in diseases. Don't believe in news reports. Don't believe in all the conglomerate of scientists because they seem to not get along themselves too well. Believe in me. Does that mean we're foolish? That means we take chances? No. We go ahead and wear the mask and wear the gloves because it gives people a sense of protection and that lowers their anxiety and that's a good thing already because anxiety is an extraction of fear. And fear is a very high power that most governments and law enforcement people know very well how to use. Fear is the great motivator of the masses. Fear is what's been driving humanity for thousands of years. And all the leaders know it. And they know that if they can drop a, a, little, a little capsule of fear in your coffee, they've got you under their hand. Now, I'm not saying we don't need government, and I don't say we, don't, we need fear. We need some amount of fear, because as the rabbis teach us, people would swallow each other alive if they weren't afraid of the police and the, and the government. So we need some fear. But the true fear is the awe of the Creator, the awe of His power, His conduct and method for running this universe. And especially for how He is bringing humanity to its final redemption, its final exodus from exile, the exile of the body, the exile of the senses, the exile of lies and all the fallen loves and fears of this world. Now the Baal Shem Tov, Rabbi Yisrael ben Eliezer, who was from Medzubush in the Ukraine. The Ukraine should be very proud, a country, to have so many great Sadiqim buried in it. There's a whole story behind that. But nonetheless, Rabbi Yisrael ben Eliezer said, Da mala mala mimcha. He takes a piece of Torah from King Solomon and he says, Know what is above you. Well, it's a, it's a very good direct advice from the rabbis, very traditional rabbinical statement 
Know what's above you. Know what's above you. There's something above you that's much greater than we realize. It's a good message. But the Hasidic master comes along and puts a little space after the first word. A little pause changes the entire meaning of the verse. This is part of the miracle of Hebrew, that a little pause or inflection changes the entire t- sense of what's being told to us. He says, Da, mala mala mimcha, no, what is above is from you. Do you hear the difference? What is above is from you. In other words, I have no one to blame. I have no one to shoot my arrows of blame at. Da, mala mala mimcha, no, what is above is from you. And you say, you see, that changes everything. Suddenly, when we take responsibility, we become images of God. Only human beings can take responsibility. Only human beings care about taking responsibility. Some human beings. The ones that understand the necessity for this. Because if human beings don't take responsibility, then we kind of resemble the animals, uh, the wild ones, you know, more than the great people of the past. But when we do take responsibility, we know what's above is from us. Now, what does that mean? It means that if I'm happy here, I've made happiness above. And if I'm afraid down here, then I create fear above. And it just bounces back down to me. So heaven is this great mirror, if you will. right? Heaven is a mirror that reflects us back to us. And that is part of God's perfection, that He's able to reflect people back to themselves, each one individually. All seven and a half billion people on this planet are living in a mirror of what God sends to them because of what they send to God. So if I'm afraid, I get back fear. If I love things, I get back love. Now, you, everybody will, of course, respond and say, yes, Abraham, but there are plenty of wonderful, loving people who are suffering right now especially, and everybody will say, well, you know, I know righteous people that suffer, and I know evil people that have a good time and dance all night. But those are the exceptions. They are not the rule. And those are individual cases that God judges individually. But when we talk about general principles, spiritual principles, this is something we need in our back pocket. Because I can then deal with my world when I know it's about me. At least I have the control to say I'm sorry. I have the control to say I I caused this. I took part of this. And you know what happens? The minute you do that, you're free. Now, yes, last night I read something absurd. Something absurd about the Pope. Francis, in the Vatican, says that this great virus... This great virus is because humanity has destroyed the planet and ruined the ecosystems and especially ignored global climate change. You know, and the author was a Catholic and the author was coming down really hard on the Pope. I felt felt sorry for the Pope. I'm sure the Pope probably doesn't care and doesn't even see the article. I don't even know how much English the Pope reads, but he reads Spanish and and knows a lot of Latin, I'm sure. But to come out with a statement as a world spiritual leader that this horrible pandemic is because we are ignoring our carbon emissions and therefore heating the planet and therefore causing ice to melt is absurd. When you look at the science, it's absurd. When you look at the metaphysics, it's absurd. God does not destroy people because we drive our cars to work or or we make a barbecue and put off a little emission in the air. I'm sorry. God gave us the cars. He gave us the petroleum fuel. He gave us the ability to burn these fuels in order to get where we need to go to make society move. Now, you know, I'm not here to, to criticize a world spiritual leader. What do I know? 
I'm not in his shoes. But I do know what our rabbis say. That our rabbis say over and over throughout the Tanakh from 600 years ago, 900 years ago, 500 years ago, that that great plague will come at the time of the redemption over the whole world and the Jews will be in their houses on Passover night and the rest of the world will be suffering. And that's for Rabbi Yaakov the Tor and that's from Sefer Yeshua and it's from Ankylos, it's Rashi. Now when all these different rabbis are weighing in at the same time on an issue, it's good to listen. If it's one guy, you could say, oh, maybe he got it wrong, maybe he had a bad dream. <laughs> but when it's five, six great sages that are spread over thousands of years, come on, folks. Now, the, the Pope knows about the Bible. Believe me, he knows the Bible. Now, I don't know how much he knows about the Bible commentaries of the Jews, but it would really help him run his popedom, you know, if he checked out what the sages say. The sages don't say that this plague is about global warming. The, the sages say this plague is about the tyranny of the nations against Israel. That they're trying to force us to make peace with our enemies. If our enemies wanted peace, that'd be one thing. But our enemies clearly don't want peace. And it's been proven over the last 70 years of this country. And every single time you track the history that the, the non-Jewish nation from Jimmy Carter and Camp David, from D Bill Clinton and, and Oslo and, and, and up to Obama and up to even uh, Mr. Trump, they want to put force peace deals down our throat with our enemies. Why? They want so much peace. Have they lived? Have they spent the weekend in Beit Lechem or in, in Ramallah or in the territories in Aza? Do they know what peace is about? No, but they do know how to tyrannize the Jews very well. And if you look at all these great natural disasters, they happen right at these same times. When they go about talking about peace against the Jewish and with the enemy, nobody makes peace with your enemy. You either fight the war. Or you wait till you fight the war. And that's why we're here, folks. Because the nations are not standing up and telling the other nations, stop trying to force peace on the Jews. The Jews have done nothing but make the Arab lives better here in Israel. The Jews have done nothing to increase the, the, the birth rate of children, the education, the health care. The transportation, the unemployment of all these Muslims that live here in Israel. Are there bad cases? Of course. Are there unfortunate incidents? Of course. There always are exceptions like that. But when we talk about millions of people, they have a, the, one of the best standards of life in the Middle East. And they're telling us we got to split is Jerusalem. Well, folks, keep on trying. Keep trying to split Jerusalem and you'll see more plagues and more disasters and more Hurricane Katrinas and more earthquakes. And now you see I've gotten all excited and upset. <laughs> it's Arab Shabbat. Forgive me. You know, but I, it's, it's really sad when you feel like you, you, we've been given the answers and the world doesn't want to hear and it hurts. You know, it really does hurt. Because millions and maybe a billion people are in lockdown. I don't know, something like that I heard. Of course, we don't know what's true news anyways anymore. But the Baal Shem Tov told us, Da! Mala mala, mimcha. No, what is above is from you. God's not forcing anything. We're creating our reality. So now when I turn on the news and get upset or confused because I don't know which report to believe, I get to choose my reality. I can be afraid or I can have faith. I can be afraid of pandemic. I can be afraid of illness. I can be afraid of not having money. I can be afraid that there won't be food in the grocery store. 
Those are all legitimate fears, but they're, but when you have fear of God, when you know that God is in control, you kind of have to let go a little bit. It doesn't mean I'm a fool. It doesn't mean I throw away my, my old bags of, <laughs> of rice and beans. Keep a few bags of rice and be beans if you can. And, you know, here in Israel, as we speak, this moment, people are just, like, getting out of grocery lines. People waiting in line all night for, for groceries. And the store is full of food. But they're doing it to control the flow of social distancing to keep people apart. Okay, that's good. Anything that lowers people's anxiety is good. Even if the mask doesn't work, if I wear the mask and it makes you feel better, fine, you don't have to smell what I ate for breakfast, you know. <laughs> but listen, it's my choice. I can respond with fear or faith. I could say, okay, it's from God. Yes, this is from... And, and, and you might think I, I sound like a religious robot, right? No one wants to sound like a religious robot. But it's not robotic. It's a simply a way of reacting to life. That if I have faith that it's all for the good, that it's going to be all for the good because da mala mala mimcha. Because what is above is from you. And if I have faith and I send that faith into the world, God says, look at Avram, he has faith. I'm going to show him what faith is. And the rabbis speak about this in the Talmud over and over. They teach us if you experience something and reject it, then that experience has to be, the volume has to be turned up. You know, if somebody doesn't want to accept their, their did in their position, then guess what? It gets worse. So these nations are bringing down tyranny on Israel, trying to make us make peace with terrorists. It's absurd. Does anybody tell Clinton to make peace with terrorists? To make Trump make peace with terrorists? Are they making peace with terrorists in Germany and in London and in Paris? Why don't they split France? You want to split Israel? Split France. They already got a lot more Arabs. But their, their tyranny is what's bringing all this plague down on the world. And as it was written hundreds of years ago, over and over, and all we got to do is look inside the books or trust someone who does. And so, along comes Shabbat. Shabbat, God says, shut down. That's it. Turn off your radios. Turn off your phones. Turn off your cars. Set up your life the way you want it to be for one day with me. And if we don't shut down for God, God says, okay, well, if you don't want to shut down to be with me, then you can shut down by other reasons. Now, a couple weeks ago, the Pope told everybody they should keep Shabbat. Very nice, interesting statement. I don't know if I heard that coming out of the Vatican in a long time. Maybe never. It's very nice. But if the Pope cares or understands what Shabbat is, and he understands what's happening between the people of the world and each other, it's not about global warming, folks, that's causing this damage, this, this, this tremendous suffering. And it's not over either. So, but when we come to Shabbat, we have our great shutdown. We have the holy shutdown. The holy shutdown says, take a break, folks. Take a, some time off from the running in your mind and the running in your feet and the running of your hands and the running of your machines. Take a break and talk to your creator. Just talk. I don't feel like praying all the time, but sometimes I'll just talk. Hey, God, how you doing? God, what's happening? God, I need your help. God, what's happening here? Why is this happening? Talk to God like your friend. That's what Rabbi Nachman said. Like your brother. God has come out of the clouds. He's come out of the mountain. He's come out of the palace. He's down here now. It's the end of days. It's the end of time. Our relationship has changed. 
God's relationship with humanity has changed because we're trying to mature. Just like I, when I talk to my grandkids, you know, I'm, you know, I'm reduced to a two a two year old. But okay, that's fun for a while, but I can't do that too long. But as my grandkids grow up, I change with them, right? I start speaking to my five year old differently, and when when the when they're ten, you speak differently again, because there's a maturation process. And so the father and the grandfather change as the kids grow up. Well, so too the creator of humanity. As humanity grows up, God is changing his communication with us. And as we grow up, we change our communication with him. It's a beautiful setup. Now we can just talk to God and I don't have to go to a temple and I don't have to go to his church and I don't have to, you know, beat myself on the head or the back or the wherever. I just talk to him. God, I need your help over here. I need a parking space. This is crazy. God, I can't wait in that line. I need groceries. God, there's no more cash in my wallet. Now what? Anything goes when you know that he's your brother and your father and he wants your best more than you do. Because God is not bent on self-destruction like a lot of people, unfortunately. So Shabbat comes along and says, shut down all that information. I don't care if the doc this doctor's right or that doctor's right. If this study is right or that study is right. This guy's projecting the future and telling us 18 months we're going to be in our houses. And this guy's saying three weeks we're going to be back to work. Like, who do you believe? Who needs that? And guess what? They get a paycheck by projecting whatever their information is telling them. So, of course, they, they want to get paid. You know, why doesn't... Why, uh, interesting, you never hear about unemployment in the media, do you? <laughs> Maybe they closed down newspapers lately because people don't read hard print anymore. But you don't hear about unemployment in, in CNN or unemployment in, you know, CNBC. Why not? Because they're not producing anything... New. They're not producing a product. Their product is words and stories and ideas that might or might not be true, and it really doesn't even matter anymore. Because it's about to spin, folks, and it's spinning us around. And I don't know what to believe, and therefore I fall into fear, and I lose my faith. And my faith gives me a ride, you know. A faith is like, it's like this thing that eases up the pressure. And it doesn't matter if you're a rabbi or you're a, a, you open the book for the first time. It really doesn't. Because God is equal to all of us. He doesn't show favoritism to anybody. Now, everybody has their own Jews. Their own Jews. <laughs> that was good. Their own Jews. Do you have your Jews? Yes, I have my Jews. <laughs> I don't even know if that's PC. Right? Everybody has their own mission, their own jobs. Right? There's Jewish jobs, there's non-Jewish. No. But really, folks, when you have faith, you ease up, the, the, the psychic pressure goes away. And then I can actually receive the light I need to understand what I don't understand. See, that's the beauty of it. By understanding that I don't understand all these reports and I don't know what to do or who to believe, I let, it forces me to let go. And God wants us to let go and let, hold on to Him. And so if I, I let go, I say, I can't believe this doctor or this scientist. I, I'll, I'll just, you know, back up from all of that, leave it aside. I say, I'm just going to have faith that it's going to be for good, that it's got to be for good. Humanity has gone down the long road from, from the day that we set out a gar the Garden of Eden. And the, the experiment is not going to fall apart. God is not going to let humanity destroy itself, folks. I will go to my grave with those words. God will not let humanity destroy itself. It, there's ups and there's downs, but it's all for the good. And if I can't believe that, then I will fight in heaven. I will fight against God because he's going to come through. And we need to believe that. So, 
Shabbat comes along and tells us, just turn everything off, folks, and believe in me. Turn off all the voices and the ideas. Be a good person. Even if you don't believe in your mask and your gloves, put them on for other people so they feel better when they see you and they're not as worried. You know, people look at you as you're driving your car behind closed windows. <laughs> I got my gloves on. I got my, my shades on. I got my mask on. <laughs> you know, And like, do you feel better? Now everybody looks like a bandit going off to, or everybody looks like an emergency room worker going off to work with our masks on. It's okay. It's okay. I saw a video that showed us how the masks, the gloves actually have the bacteria on it so that even if I am protecting myself, the gloves become a dangerous item. Okay, well, we can laugh about that because we have to just throw everything away, including these fallen fears, including all the reports, it doesn't really matter what's going to happen. What matters is that we have faith and that we pray accordingly. And you pray for yourself and your family and your community and the world. And you can pray for the stars as well. Because humanity is the conduit of the infinite light into the finite vessels. This is something that you learn in Kabbalah, that there's a hierarchy of how God's light comes into the world. And we think, we're, we're down here, we're the human race, we're these little people six feet tall if we're lucky, right, walking around on the planet Earth. And there's angels way up in heaven, way higher than us. But it's not true. We, our souls are higher than them. Understand, your ability to think and to be free and to choose is higher than the highest angel because that angel cannot choose. And therefore, we are receiving the light of God before the angels, before the planets, before the stars, before the, the trees and the fields and the lions and the tigers and bears. And so we control, we are the, the, the faucet that turns on the holiness or not. Each person in their own little life and in the world around them. And when, you know, I've been doing this a little while. After a few decades, you start to get it. It starts to make so much sense. I can't even remember being who I was when I didn't know these things and didn't learn these books. I, I listened to a tape of myself from three decades ago, and I'm like, who is that dummy? Who is that guy? You know, I was, it's astounding when you have faith. It's astounding when suddenly it all ties together. All this craziness ties together. And there's good in everything. There's good in everything. There's good in, in the lowest person and in the highest person. And we have to bind it all together. And if it's too hard for us, okay, then don't try to go where you can't go. And the Pope went where he, where he shouldn't go. To blame the pandemic on global warming? Come on. So, but I've heard good things about this Pope. So, you know, there's hope for everybody. Hope for the Pope. You know? <laughs> I heard he makes his own clothes like Gandhi did. That's pretty righteous. But, you know, I don't have time to make my clothes. And, I, and I, they wouldn't look very nice either. Still, folks, Shabbat's coming. We have a chance to, to do a holy shutdown. Not for the sake of the government bearing, breathing down our necks. I heard there's governors in America that are ref refusing the shutdown. Of course, they're talking about letting people work. But, but as a Jew, God says, sit, do nothing. Sing, eat, drink, praise, dance. And the world's going to think you're crazy? That's okay. They need to see that. The world needs to see the Torah in action. And when they do, say, wow, these people are pretty cool. I know I had that experience. I went out to L.A. 30 years ago. I wasn't in, looking to become religious. I was chasing Hollywood dreams. And I, I met these religious people. I said, these are very cool people. They're very nice. They take care of things. They take care of each other. They care. They have priorities. So... Shabbat is coming, and I could talk a lot longer, and I'm sure all of you would say, okay, enough. <laughs> enough is enough. But we'll be back next week, and we will continue our works. Our teaching with Rabbi Nachman is coming to an end of the Sefer, which we've been doing for about 14 months. We're going to learn new things, and we've got 
a lot of creative projects on tap that are coming out. Poems and books, essays, meditations. You can catch us on YouTube, Facebook, AvramShira.com. You can also find us on, it's called Insight Timer. It's a meditation website and um, it's a place called Another place, uh, I don't even know, what what is it called? Urban Urban uh, Guru or something like that? No. <laughs> Anyways, there's a lot of, a lot of places out there to, to get the word out. But, you know, I think that right now the word is faith. We've got to see this through. We've got to see ourselves in the way we want to be and believe in that. Believe in yourself and your highest self. And you know what? It's going to happen. And the people that believe in fear will get fear. Because we're Selam Elohim, we're made in God's image. That means we create reality inside out. So let's create the greatest reality, which is Shabbat, which is every man is a king when he sits at his Shabbat table. God bless all of you. Love you all. See you next week.